So I, I get the pleasure of, of not talking about anything related to workplace. Um, we, this, is, this is about the, the travel and the, the, the journey to delivering the project for Microsoft. So for us, real estate and facilities, same challenge, I think, as, as many of, of the other presenters you've heard. You know, we've got to deliver connected, accessible, sustainable, and secure spaces. And, you know, we're, we're doing that across the globe to enhance the employee experience. And as we've, as we've uh, established the, these principles, um, and, and moving to build this campus, the idea that you know, Microsoft's in a unique position to be able to combine the physical world and the digital world, and, and how do we do that? You know, we're, we're essentially creating uh, enhanced employee experiences, and we hope at the end of the day that that, that helps us uh, attract and retain talent. You've heard, you've heard that, you know, that's the, that's the goal. Um, and so when we think, what, you know, what is digital transformation, right? As we, as we start to design, you've heard a lot of these things. You know, what, what are the enhanced employee experiences that, the, that, that everybody's looking for, not just the, not the, just the Gen Z folks, but um, everybody? And so you know, the, these are, I think, after, after hearing Kim talk and, and others, you know, what, it's about convenience, it's about choice, um, and, and we're building these the, more than these, but we're, we're building these into the design of the workplace. And so when we started the project, all the focus was on this, right? It was about the end product. It was about what are we doing for the employees at the end of the day. And my team came up and said, well, you know, we're doing a lot of great stuff on, on the journey to, to deliver this, right? We're digitally transforming the delivery process um, along the way. And so as we looked at, you know, how do we enable those experiences at, at the top? You know, three years ago, we started with a, with a master plan that, that developed a campus that was more connected. We removed all the cars from the surface. It's underground parking. Um, the buildings are in closer proximity than, than any of our other buildings on campus. Um, so the foundation was laid with, with a master plan. The buildings, um, we're, we're in the, the, the corn shell process right now. We're, we're designing the buildings. But more importantly, we're, we're figuring out what does the infrastructure need to be um, in order to support the devices that ultimately support the, the user experience at, at the end of the day. And so a lot of work and a lot of folks are, are working on, on sort of this physical and digital transformation of our, our workplace for the end user um, at, the, at the end of the day. But for us, we, we've got our own campus transformation um, going on. So, so our existing campus, um, this was some of the original buildings that were built by Microsoft in, in 1986. We went in, we, we demolished 13 buildings, got rid of about 900,000 square feet. And in return, we're bringing back 17 buildings and about 3 million square feet of, of space to house 12,000 uh, employees. And yes, all the people in those buildings are compressed into our existing portfolio. So we went to probably from like a 92% occupancy or, or load factor up to as, much, as high as 110% in some buildings. So you can imagine the, the angst uh, among our employee base at 110% at loading. So, and you know, the, the idea of, of well, what, what is it, how, how do we digitally transform the, the delivery process? You know, and life before, uh, that, should say, that should say life before technology, not life with technology. So, so life before technology was this. You know, I'll, I'll date myself. I came into the industry at about AutoCAD 13. So anybody before AutoCAD 13? Anybody after AutoCAD 13? Probably, you know, probably maps pretty well to the, to the generations um, that, we, that, you, that you've heard about. And so, life with technology. So we started this project about 18 months ago, and there's a, there's a myriad of, of, of vendors out there that are providing technology. And some, one of them is here today, so I was gonna mention, I, I noticed that Procore was right in the middle of my slide, and I, I talked to the, to, to the Procore uh, person last night. So, uh, great technologies. Some of them aren't ready, right? Uh, and certainly the industry's been slow to adopt. Uh, everybody says the construction industry and the design, probably more construction is, is slow to adopt the technology and, and they're playing catch up. But, so we looked, at, we looked at all of this and said, okay, which, which ones should we use? Which ones, are, which ones are actually ready in the industry to, to come in and, and add real value? And, um, 
and so we put together a steering committee. Uh, the, the scale of this project allowed us for, for sort of to gather a lot of the best and brightest minds in, in our area to look at all of these and sorry, which ones are gonna provide real value to Microsoft? Which ones are gonna provide real value to the, to the project team? And again, some of them aren't ready. Uh, and so I think as an owner, you've gotta know your technology, you've gotta know what you wanna get out of technology because there's a, a lot of, uh, even, even the, the architects and, and project managers and other consultants will sort of bring this technology and it, it sort of feels technology for technology's sake. And it, it's obviously, you know, you can't, you can't spend that kind of money on, on, a, on a technology solution that, that doesn't provide any real value. And so the, the project, um, again, the, the scale of the project is, is, is massive, and, but, but it affords uh, a lot of opportunities and a lot of challenges. So for us, when we thought about taking on a project of this size, lots of risks, lots of relationships that are, that are being developed, you know, the, the three million square feet of space, we're, we're delivering this as, as, as 66 months from start to finish, so this is a five-year journey that we're on to deliver this much square footage. But as we looked at which one of these is the, the biggest risk, can somebody, somebody shout out which one of these do you think is the, the biggest risk or, or the one that, that kept me up at night the, the most? So, you know, the, the complexity of that many players coming together to, to deliver this project and that many different players, different architects, um, different mechanical design build subcontractors. And at the end of the day, we estimated we have about 500, more than 500 BIM models that all needed to be aggregated together. And so, so what does that look like? The, you know, the, the, the network uh, model map for the project is, is this, right? And it, it shows a lot of the interconnection um, within a part of the village. So we, we ended up dividing the project into four villages and each has a vertically integrated design, construction, and project management team. Um, and so the BIM models are, are, following, are following suit. And so what, what's, what's exciting about this is we ended up just hiring a firm out of, out of Australia, of all places, um, to, to organize all of this data into a one federated uh, BIM model. And, and as, as that was happening, we, we realized that there was an opportunity for us to use that BIM model as the basis for everything we were doing. And so, at, you know, as a technology company, we have a lot of internal partners. We have a lot of first uh, uh, partners, internal product teams, as well as our, our partners that want to leverage this project for their, for their benefit. And, and what we looked at was we could use the BIM model as the basis uh, for all of our digital content. And then how does that digital content ultimately get out to um, the the, the world, right, through presentations with our leadership, internal collaboration on the project teams, just communicating the project to 72 different firms that all need to figure out how to be on the same page at the same time in order for this to be successful. And then marketing. You know, we, we do a, a bit of marketing on the project to our own employees, right? They're compressing them at 110% uh, uh, capacity in a building, they need to be as excited about this project as we are, so they basically stop filing those complaints about, about being too compressed. And so we do, you know, we do a number of physical uh, presentations in the, in the top corner there where we've, we bring the physical model out, but we also have uh, HoloLens, and this is an example of, of a presentation or a, a marketing piece we did for the London retail store that we, we just opened uh, this last summer. And you know, it, it's just a way to showcase the project to, to, to people using HoloLens. This was an example there. We're also in the bottom corner able to bring a bunch of people together in a HoloLens experience and, and they all see the same thing at the same time, which, which allows for us to, to tell a, a better story. And then the, the, bottom, uh, the bottom left corner, you know, the, the idea that as employees are, are either in our visitor center, which is, this is a picture of a, a mock-up, or they're walking along the sidewalk they can scan a QR code that's been spray painted on the ground, hold up their phone, and they can basically see an augmented image of, of what, what's now a bunch of dirt, but they can hold the phone up and, and see the, the campus, and we're, we're placing a few of those QR codes around. Um, so the, the other piece that we looked at, we're, we've implemented a, a, a drone uh, capture a program called SkyCatch, and they fly it every, uh, every week and take 3D images. And this is, 
This is an example of where we took what was just a 3D point cloud, turned it into an animation to share with our leadership uh, to, get, to show them progress. The other thing we're doing is the, we're overlaying a heat map over the hole um, in order to, to register the, the data for the dig. So that's a, a heat map of the dig and the progress over time. And what we're able to do is take the, the, the drone data, compare it with the contractor's data, and, and know whether or not they're, they're telling the truth. And I, I, think, uh, I, I think I was gonna use the, the phrase trust but verify a number of times, but after Kim said that we were very skeptical, I said, okay, I'm not, that, but maybe my Gen X is what's driving my skepticism of the contractor. But, and, and so through this technology, we were able to uh, essentially um, map, we're within 5% of what the drone capture data tells us and what the contractor is actually billing us for. So again, it's a, it's a trust but verify. The other piece, when you, when you combine the BIM data with the physical um, uh, data in terms of the drone capture, it, it's, a, it's a really great way to, to just measure progress and understand the complexities of this project in the, in the sequence. And so this is, a, this is an image of, of sort of, it's not exactly mapped to schedule, uh, but it, it's, it, it gives us pretty good insight into, okay, how does the garage work? How does the dig work? We can't start any of the buildings off the garage until the garage is finished. So, so it, it, again, it's just useful data for the owner, for us, to, to make decisions and, and know, um, sort of not being in the dark about, yeah, yeah, we're gonna meet the schedule, we're gonna get there. Um, we've got proof that we're, we're actually gonna get there. And I said the industry is is not quite ready for this. So the, this is so the, the the different levels are the different drone capture. And as we started digging the hole, we said, well, you know, is there an issue with with how we're doing the shore walls? And is there an issue with how we're digging the hole? And are those schedules mapping up? Well, the the, the data was able to tell us that yes, we we didn't have an issue that the the shoring folks could keep up with the dig folks, and we weren't going to have a, have a delay, but. What was interesting was that the subcontractors for the, um, for the shoring planned to give us as-built data at the end of the job. And so they're like, yeah, yeah, we'll tell you at the end when, when the, the and, but we needed, we needed as-built information at every lift. And you can see how many, how many shoring lifts are on the, the wall there. And so we had to educate them about why we needed it. Why They're like, I'll tell you when I'm done and give you the as-built at that point, but um, it, it didn't, you know, it didn't help us. So, so trying to educate the, the market, educate the subcontractors as to why we need, needed as-built data real-time uh, was important. And then, as this shows, you know, the ability to, to, to build it virtually before it's built physically has is, is, is really proven to be uh, uh, an amazing tool, and, and not that any of this is, is particularly new. But you know, we, we dug the holes and you know, a quick clash detection run on, on the model will tell us, okay, we dug the holes in the right spot. May seem simple enough, but how many, how many times and how much money is spent on infield change orders because of this lack of coordination? So we set out at the beginning to say, you know, we, we didn't want that. We didn't want any, any, any costs associated with lack of coordination. And, though, and so this last piece, you take, you take three pieces. So Trimble site crew is, is, a, is a gate entry system. Every employer has a badge, every worker has a badge. Um, we've got the federated model, and then we have traditional capital cash flows. And so what happens when you, when you put those together is we're able to take all of the data uh, from the workers and, and how many uh, man hours are spent on site. We're able to overlay that onto the actual BIM data, and then we overlay that onto the cash flows, and we can do worker and productivity analysis to determine, again, trust but verify that the contractor's actually telling us the truth. If, if they're supposed to put $50,000 uh, a month in, or, or they need to spend 50,000 man hours a month in order to meet the schedule, we've actually got the tools now that can help us um, measure that predict predictive analytics uh, a little bit on, on schedule failure, right? And realizing before it's too late that the schedule is crashed because they just don't have the man hours on site to put the work in place that needs to be done to meet schedule. So we're excited about this uh, in terms of uh, helping us uh, predict the future. 
And then all of it uh, for us, uh, with all the different vendors and all the different partners, all of this is uh, uh, bubbled up through our Power BI platform, data visualization, which is a, a, a Microsoft product. Um, and, and not that I'm pitching it, but <laughs> the, uh, the, the idea that everybody gets the same view and, and can slice and dice the, the data. And again, it's just data for uh, different um, organizations. And I, I'll leave you with the technology, the, so this is, uh, this, this is Vinny, he's a structural superintendent on the London store uh, when we, we did it. So he came in, he demoed the entire space. We took our leadership through with HoloLens to show them an augmented view of the, of the store. So we went into the raw space, we had, everybody put HoloLens uh, on, they got to see the store real time, fully rendered, augmented over the existing space. And Vinny was sort of in the background, presentation ends, he comes up, and he's, he says, hey, Keith, what, are you, what is that, right? He'd never seen it, and I told him what it was, and he goes, can I, can I do it? I said, yeah, so we put the HoloLens on him, we take him through the presentation, and he stops and he says, Keith, take a picture of me, I wanna send it to my granddaughter, because she says I'm horrible with technology. So, you know, there, there's a willingness to participate in technology, and I think, you know, it's certainly incumbent on, on the owners uh, to, to drive it, know what technology wants to be, know what you want to get out of technology, and then, and then drive it into your projects. And so, uh, and I'm two minutes over. I told Michael I didn't want to get the hook as he pulls me off stage. Um, so that's uh, just a little bit of insight into, uh, into the project and, and how Microsoft is, is digitally transforming the delivery process. Thank you.